Hello and welcome to Cubes Made Easy. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built this super floppy Mega Minx. The super part is from the super floppy cube where if you turn a side uh, halfway you can make another turn and put a piece essentially onto that layer and turn it back and do this fancy stuff. We'll talk about this later. Because I, tru I haven't truly finished the project, but this is a this is more of a progress update. Anyway, I'll, now I'll show you how I got to this point. When I saw this puzzle for sale, I knew I was getting two. This is a ghost variant of a single layer pentagonal prism, but there isn't currently a mass produced regular pentagonal prism, so I decided to build my own. This mod has two parts. First, the pieces need to be extended and sanded so that the puzzle is a regular pentagonal prism. The second part is shaving the edges and corners down so that super floppy cube moves can be made. Due to just simple geometry, these turns can't easily be done on a flat faced prism, so uh, I'm going to use a technique called fudging. I'm not sure if there's a more proper term, but fudging is the term Oscar Van Deventer used, uh, which is essentially modifying the pieces of a puzzle so that uh, geometrical restrictions can be avoided. I started by removing all the stickers from the ghost pentagonal prism. The glue was surprisingly strong and left a lot of residue on the puzzle. To get rid of the residue, I sprayed a bit of goo gone onto a paper towel and rubbed the residue off of each piece. I then washed all the pieces and uh, put the edge caps back onto the puzzle. I mixed up some epoxy sculpt and got the pieces ready for extending. I had a general idea of how far each piece should be extended based on some me measurements I took from an old Mefferts Mega Mix. But I wasn't entirely precise when adding the epoxy because I knew that later on I could fill in any gaps and sand away the excess material. So I first extended the edge caps and used an X-Acto knife to shape the extensions a bit. I put the leftover mixed epoxy onto one of the corners so as to not waste materials. Once the extensions had cured, I sanded them down so that I could put them back onto the puzzle. The pieces were, you know, getting there in terms of their shape, but they needed some work. I used a few pieces of tape to mark out how far I should sand down so that I knew when to stop. Once the edges were a lot closer to being done, I put all of the edge caps back onto the puzzle so that I could plan the corner extensions. And the corners need to, needed to be extended so that they matched the adjacent edges so it was easier to base the extension lengths off of uh, the actual edges. So I disassembled the puzzle and removed uh, all the corners and all the center caps except two. I extended all of the corners using the two edge caps to get a rough idea of how far to extend. Once the shapes were complete, I let the epoxy cure. And from then on, it was just a process of continually sanding all of the edges and corners until the regular pentagonal prism shape was more or less complete. I first sanded the inner parts so that I could assemble the puzzle, and then sanded uh, the outer parts more or less so that it's a regular pentagonal prism. After that was done, I did the fudging, which essentially means I just shaved the edges down at an angle. Because two of the edge cap sides already had the proper angles, I uh, used them as a base and uh, marked out with uh, more tape where I was going to sand down to. After a few sessions of extending pieces with epoxy, epoxy sculpt and sanding them down, I stickered it up very poorly. This was before I had a vinyl cutter, so I cut everything by hand, and not very well. But in any case, I felt like I was really not getting a whole lot of anywhere, because I kept s sanding pieces down and then re-extending them, but the thing is, I didn't really have a final shape in mind. like. All I really knew was that these four sides have to be the same, and this should be a perfect square. 
but even then that wasn't actually that easy to achieve. So what I did actually is took a complete turn and I made I took another of these ghost floppies and I put some 3D printed extensions on it. Now the way the extensions were designed is you can basically see where they are by the sticker scheme. The unstickered parts are what remains of the original puzzle and everything under the stickers except for the centerpiece is a, a 3D printed extension. S and unfortunately, the way I designed the corner extensions, it means that there was a lot of room for error. Uh, and with the way I cut the actual original corner, that's why you can see that it's not exactly straight. And the yellow side looks a bit worse. And the vinyl cutter also was acting a bit wonky, so some of these stickers aren't great. But that is fine. This is not the final version of the puzzle. This is just where I'm going to leave it now. I will provide an update in a couple of months on on the completed version of this because this ultimately I still want to have a normally modded uh, super floppy Mega Minx. Like the three D printed extensions are nice, but honestly, it's, it's just not the met my method of choice. What this does give me, however, is a perfect template for what I should be sanding down towards. Like you can see that this cap is basically perfect. This is a perfect square and these sides are all equal. This uh, turns noticeably uh, worse than the purely modded one and that's simply because there's various bumps like right here that haven't been sanded down properly and uh, in general I haven't sanded the 3D printed pieces down at all. I'm surprised the stickers haven't actually been falling off because that's what they would logically do. But in any case, just because this one actually looks a lot better, this is the one I'm going to scramble and solve. It does turn worse, so just bear with me. Alright, so looks like a good scramble to me. So I'm going to solve this like I solve a super floppy cube. And that means that the first step is to get it back to a uh, pentagonal prism. What I'm also going to do is uh, turn these edge pieces so that the unstickered sides are on the inside of the puzzle. Because that's generally how things should be. So let's turn this here and match it up. And then make this alone so that we can put this next to it. Similar situation right there. Pair up the piece and then take the corner out of the way if this can turn. It can. Alright, and now it's back to a uh, fudged pentagonal prism. So now I guess normally what you do is solve the edges on a super floppy cube. So that's what I'm going to do. It's only two that need to be solved. And on a, and the super floppy cube makes it a lot easier since all you can since you can just solve them by doing this. That's if the turning quality actually lets me do it. There we go. I'm not working on the corners yet. Okay, and now this one. There we go. So all of the edges are in their soft positions. So the last step presumably would just be to cycle the corners around. So let's see. Are there any, are any of them already in place? Yeah, this one's already in place, so this, so let's try finding one next to it. So this should be red and blue, and here's the red and blue, so let's see, if we turn this here, 
it is in the correct orientation, but now we want to fix these edges again, so we take an unsolved corner and put it back right here. And it turns out that was actually its correct place. Now I should put this back. So now what we have is a situation where it's just these two corners that are swapped. And we can swap them easily by doing that. And then fix the edge once more by doing the super floppy move. Although that is more difficult than it seems if you've got something that turns this badly. I'm going to take this off camera. It's a bit easier to align it. Sometimes you just have to pull a piece. Um, anyway, there we go. Now the puzzle is solved. So if I'm going to be honest, this is probably actually a bunch easier than the non-super pentagonal prism, which of course I haven't made actually, but you could scramble and solve this as a uh, non-super pentagonal prism. But yeah, this is easier to solve, just because edge orientation is a joke. I mean, it's trivial to orient edges. And uh, the major hazard when switching corners around is that the edges get messed up, and then that's just bypassed. So overall, pretty easy puzzle. I am definitely going to look into make it, modding this puzzle so that it matches this one in its shape. And once I have it perfected, I will be certain to make another video. But for now, that's it. That's where I'm leaving this project for today. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.